Hey Logo Designers, today I want to talk to you about Pantone in Logo Package Express 3. In previous versions of Logo Package Express, we provided a really convenient feature which was automatic Pantone conversion. When you set your logo components and generated them, we would automatically create a version of any of your color logos with a Pantone conversion that was really good match. We are no longer providing this feature and I want to tell you why and I want to show you what you can do to still provide your clients with Pantone logos using Logo Package Express. Adobe and Pantone seem to have come to some agreement where Pantone is asking Adobe to remove all of the color books with the Pantone color swatches from newer releases of Adobe Illustrator. And what Pantone wants instead is for you to pay for a subscription to Pantone Connect, which is their extension that will allow you to add Pantone colors to your artwork, convert existing artwork to Pantone colors, and so on. The problem is that this is a paid service. I can't have a feature in my product that is reliant on a third party service that is another paid subscription in order for my service to work. So it is because of that that we have removed the automatic Pantone conversion feature. So there's two things we can do here right off the bat. The first thing is it's only the newest versions of Adobe Illustrator that do not have the Pantone swatch books. If you go to your Creative Cloud account and you look at anywhere that you see Illustrator, you can click the three dots and go to other versions. There is also, of course, you can go to the illustration tab on the left here, click Illustrator, then click the three dots here and say other versions. And this will show you older versions. I believe that any version with 26 on it is a version that will still have the Pantone color books included in the software. So the first thing that you can do is just download one of those older versions and you'll still have access to Pantone. If, however, you want to use Pantone Connect, you can um, install Pantone Connect through Adobe's extension service. And then, of course, you can't do anything at all inside of Pantone Connect other than create palettes inside the platform here, but they don't have any relevance to your artwork inside of Adobe Illustrator unless you pay for a subscription. I'm sure there are plenty of other tutorials about how to use Pantone Connect and how to get a subscription, so I'm not gonna go into it. Uh, just know that everything I'm doing with Illustrator for this tutorial has a Pantone Connect parallel that where you can do the same thing. So now onto the tutorial. I'm using Adobe Illustrator 2022. This is going to be one of the Illustrator versions with 26 in the version number. And I'm gonna show you some tricks. So we are no longer doing automatic Pantone conversion, but that doesn't mean you still can't get automatic Pantone conversion using Adobe Illustrator. So I have this grid of logos here, and I'm actually not even going to be exporting all of these. Uh, but I wanted to show you how you can quickly convert to Pantone colors using Illustrator. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of these artboards. I'm going to use Shift O, the keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to make a selection of all of these artboards. And then I will hold Option and drag out. And now I have a duplicate of all of those logo variations. And I'll do it one more time to create two duplicates. Now what I'm going to do is select all of the logos in the second set, and I'm going to go up to the control panel here. There is a little pinwheel button, and it is called Recolor Artwork. If you can't find it here, then you can go to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork. This will open a panel. Now, the panel does not have what we need by default, so we need to click on Advanced Options. And then we need to go to where we see the color sliders. Just to the right of that, under the word none, there is a grid icon that when hovered over says limits the color group to colors in a swatch library. We'll click this and this will show our color books. We can go to color books and then all the way down to solid coded. We will click OK. And what this has done is recolored the artwork, limiting it to the solid coded color book which means that it has recolored these logos to have Pantone swatches. So you can see when we click here, 
um, that this is colored with 7702C and the purple is 7679C. So we will do the same thing again over here in the third set of logos. I will click the recolor artwork icon. I will have to click advanced options again and the same grid icon, go to color books and this time I'm picking solid uncoated, click OK. And now we can see that the Pantone swatches have been added for uncoated as well. All right, so this is a quick way for you to do Pantone conversion of your components, but of course we haven't gotten into Logo Package Express yet. And quickly I will just say that you could do the same thing using Pantone Connect by making a selection of all your logos and then choosing colors and click convert. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure if it adds the swatches and you should be able to adjust your settings to get a similar result to what we've just done using Adobe Illustrator's previous versions. So now let's get into the workaround for exporting Pantone colors from Logo Package Express. So our first set of logos here is just our CMYK artwork. And it's kind of important for this demonstration and this workflow that you start with CMYK colors. This means that the document color mode is CMYK, which you can see up in the tab, or by going to File, Document Color Mode, and see that CMYK is checked. The first thing we're going to do with Logo Package Express is before we even set any artwork, we're going to come to the Colors tab. And under the Colors tab, what we're going to do is add some custom color schemes. We are going to add a custom color scheme for every color variation that needs Pantone and for Pantone coated and uncoated, depending on what Pantone colors you need. If you just need coated, you'll only do a certain number of custom color schemes. If you need Pantone uncoated as well, you'll double it. So in this case, what we're ultimately going to have is a full color logo, and that's going to need Pantone coated and Pantone uncoated. And we're also going to have an inverted logo, which is going to need Pantone coated and Pantone uncoated. So I'm going to add four color schemes, again, before I have set any components. And I'm just gonna go with the default color just to make it quick, it doesn't matter. Um, it's not gonna be generating anything at this point. We can just use the default color from the color picker. Then we need to label these color schemes. So like I said, I have a full color PMS C for Pantone coded. And then I have a full color PMS U for Pantone uncoded. And then I have inverted PMS C and inverted PMS U. I use the abbreviation PMS because certain operating systems like Windows put a character limit on file names and the more we add to these color scheme names, the longer those file names will become and we can run into issues with character limits on file names. So PMS is a good way to abbreviate. All right, so we're ready for the next step, which is to go to the components window and start setting components. So I'm only going to do a logo, logo type and logo mark. So what you will see is that we have our three components in all of the default color variations. And then we have four custom color schemes at the bottom labeled with the intended Pantone color. But if we look at our swatches panel, we will see that there are no Pantone colors here. So the next thing we need to do is go back to our artwork where we did our color conversions. And we just need to make a selection that includes all of the Pantone colors that we need. So in this case, I just have these two colors, teal and purple, in coated and uncoated, and I've got that represented with these two logos here. So I'm going to create a custom component, and I'm just going to call it colors. This is a temporary component. We're going to delete it before we export. So I will click set component, and now what will happen is those Pantone swatches are going to come into the working document and be available for us to recolor with. The last step is to recolor these logo variations to fit the Pantone scheme that we desire. It's very important that you do not ungroup any of these variations. Ungrouping it will make it so that none of these variations will actually be exported. So as we recolor, we need to be either double clicking into the group and making edits there, or using the direct selection arrow, which is A on the keyboard, 
to make our selections for recoloring. I'm going to speed through and recolor these and we will pick up when that is done. All right, I have now recolored all of these variations. We have the full color logo in PMSC and the full color in PMSU, as well as the inverted logos in both of those Pantone schemes as well. You will notice that I did not recolor anything in the colors component because this is going away. It was just a means for us to get the Pantone colors into our document. And now I can go back to the components tab and I can click the reset icon in the upper right corner of the component window. And now that will go away and you see that we still have all of our Pantone variations. I understand that this can be a pretty time consuming process of having to go through and manually recolor all of these, obviously, especially when compared to version two, but I hope that you understand that Pantone is the reason for this and we simply cannot provide the feature anymore. I want to show you what the resulting logo package export and upload would look like, but there is one more thing to note before we move on. When you export your logos, you will remember that we wanted the logos to be in the CMYK color space when we set them. When we go to export, we want to have print and web selected. And if we are in the CMYK color space, it will export our print logos first. You'll want to go through and export your print logos. And then when you get the prompt in the Logo Package Express panel window telling you it's time to export your web logos, you will want to come to the spread and delete all of the Pantone variations. Just delete them from their artboards and then continue with your web export. This is important because the PMS colors are not for web, they are not for screens, and you're only going to want to provide them to your clients as a print option. So again, make sure all of these variations are deleted before you export your web logos and you should be good to go. Here is a resulting logo package from this same exact logo spread here. And I just want to show you how things are organized. In the past with version two, because it was a built-in feature, we would have just had full color and inside of full color would have been options for Pantone, CMYK, and RGB. But now we have had to add them as custom color schemes so they will have their own folder at the color scheme level of the hierarchy. So as we go in, you can see that we have the full color PMS C, which is the name of the custom color scheme that we created. And unfortunately, confusingly, we have CMYK at the end of this file. So if you are on a Mac, there is a very simple way to deal with this. If you are on a Windows machine, I'm not entirely sure how you're going to fix this other than manually renaming these files, unless you can find a third party service that allows you to batch rename files. But if you are on a Mac, all you need to do is go into your list view and choose any of these folders which have PMS in them, and then go ahead and option click to fully expand the entire folder and all of its contents. And then what we can do is make a selection of all of these files. You can go to the bottom of the list and then shift click and command and shift click and alternate between commanding and shift clicking to grab all of these different variations. And I can see that I forgot a few folders, so I'm going to open those up as well. And once you have all of these files selected, you can right click, choose rename, make sure that you have replace text chosen, and we want to replace dash CMYK with nothing and click rename. And now you can see we have bulk renamed all of these files and there is no longer CMYK at the end of the file name. So this is what the folder structure will look like. And now let's take a look at what this looks like in a portal project. Once you are on the portal project, you will be able to find the Pantone colors under the logo color filter. If we choose a logo use of printing, and then we go to full color PMS, this is where your clients are going to find the ability to download the Pantone coded versions of their PDFs, for example, or any other vector files that you've provided. 
Unfortunately, Logo Package Portal is not perfectly set up to handle this workaround, and we currently allow PNGs and JPEGs to be generated from any variation that is in the portal. So you can see if we go to website, which is going to be an RGB color gamut file, your clients can still download JPEGs and PNGs that claim to be Pantone color. But of course they won't be because PNGs and JPEGs cannot hold Pantone information. So this is one of the downsides of using Pantone in coordination with Logo Package Portal at this time. Another thing to note is that when you do the workaround for adding Pantone colors to your logo packages, you'll find that the colors tab has a lot of extra swatches in it. That is because it's going to have your original color for full color web and RGB and print, but it's also going to have generated swatches for the Pantone coded for all of the colors that you have and the Pantone uncoded for all of the colors that you have. So really this whole ecosystem is not set up to work very flawlessly with Pantone, but if you are using the portal and you do want to provide Pantone colors, you should know that when you come into the colors tab, you may need to delete several of these color swatches before handing off the project to your client. So the workarounds presented in this tutorial are the best we can do and I really appreciate your understanding about the effect that this new relationship between Pantone and Adobe is having on Logo Package Express 3. Hopefully this helps you out and doesn't cause too much pain. Thanks for watching.